Well, when it comes down to one of the most endangered species in Alberta, I think there's one animal that tops the list, and that's the Ord's kangaroo rat. How did we get into this uh, situation? Well, my next guest might have some answers on that front. Real pleasure to welcome Sandy Robertson. She is a wildlife biologist with Alberta Environment and Parks. Sandy, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time and, and talking to us about this amazing little creature. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm always happy to talk about the Ords kangaroo rat. Well, let's let's get into it. Um, is it correct that it is probably number one on the endangered list here in Alberta? Um, maybe number three below caribou and sage grouse. But yes, it is um, a species that has suffered severe decline in the past 15 years or so. So our populations are down um, substantially from when they were listed as an endangered species. And what, what are the circumstances that have led to its, its uh, ranking at, on the endangered species list? Well, a big threat is habitat change and habitat loss. Um, so with the arrivals of Europeans and land use practices, of course, um, the early farmers and ranch ranchers were not pleased with the amount of open sand dune habitat that we had here in Alberta, and they did whatever they could to try to vegetate those sand dunes and lose that habitat. So that's a big piece of the puzzle. Um, with the arrivals of, of Europeans, the loss of bison, suppression of fire and land management practices, we've just lost a lot of our open sand dune habitat that the kangaroo rats require and prefer um, in Alberta. Um, and then We've also lost a lot of that habitat just within the last um, 15 years, it's been shrinking um, as well. So that's, yeah, definitely a big, big threat to the species. So in terms of just how many of these um, uh, uh, kangaroo rats are, are running around, um, do we have any sense? Um, well, last year I did a pretty complete inventory and I, and I estimate the population to be around a thousand individuals at this time. And I guess historically we really don't know, but does that seem like a, a low number given the, the range that they once had? Yes. Um, back in the early 2000s when they were, um, when the stats report was completed and they were designated as an endangered species, the population was estimated to be two to 4,000 at that time. What work are you doing presently to um, better our understanding of this little mammal? Uh, well, at this time, I'm definitely on a course to conserve the species. So I've been working with the Canadian Wildlife Service and the Department of National Defense. So um, the Middle Sand Hills and uh, many of the kangaroo rat sites are found in the Suffield National Wildlife Area. So I've been working with those other departments to restore habitat. So what we've been doing is carrying out prescribed fires to restore kangaroo rat habitats. And then some of those habitats, um, the kangaroo rat population has been extirpated. So where there's extirpation or very low kangaroo rat populations, I'm carrying out conservation translocations. How important is it to get uh, additional support from other landowners in the area outside of the, uh, of the military areas? Um, very important, but at this time, the kangaroo rat sand dunes, um, as I like to call them, they <laughs> owned by the kangaroo rat, but the kangaroo rat sites and sand dunes outside of Suffield um, have continued to have um, healthy, stable kangaroo rat populations. So land managers in those areas are doing a very good job and maintaining the sand dunes and, like I said, healthy kangaroo rat populations persist there. So those are not the populations of greatest concern at this time. Um, so right now I'm concentrating on um, restoring kangaroo rat habitat within the Suffield National Wildlife Area and repopulating those habitats. So within the Suffield National Wildlife Area, one possible and likely reason why those dunes are stabilizing faster than outside is there's no grazing, there's no cattle grazing um, in those habitats um, to help maintain open sand habitat. Maybe, um, yeah, one of the contributing factors, but the sand dunes are shrinking 
at an accelerated rate in the Suffield National Wildlife Area compared to some of the dunes outside. In terms of what is sustainable in that area, is there a is there a magic number that you hope the the population can reach, and and uh, uh, and how long would it take to get to that number? Um, I don't have a magic number at this time. My main goal is to just ensure that these um, historic sites are restored and repopulated where necessary. And yeah, so I hope to do some more work to determine what the carrying capacity is at these sites. Um, but at this time, I'm just trying to repopulate them with as many individuals as I can get there. Of course, nothing <laughs> exists in a in a vacuum. Um, last year, you were doing work on on rattlesnakes, and I imagine that that work continues. And of course, uh, uh, a little mammal like a, a kangaroo rat. I would think would be on the diet of a rattlesnake. Is that, are those two kind of connected in a way, Sandy? Absolutely. Yeah, the prairie rattlesnake is probably the greatest predator of or its kangaroo rat. However, the kangaroo rats are amazing at getting away from their rattlesnake predators. Um, so some research that's gone on in the States um, showing um, the relationship between kangaroo rats and rattlesnakes and how effectively Kangaroo rats can maneuver their body around and escape predation by rattlesnakes, escape those strikes. And the research has shown that they can escape those strikes about 60% of the time. Um, but yeah, definitely rattlesnakes are probably the biggest predator of kangaroo rats in this field national wildlife area. In terms of their uh, ability to survive Alberta winters, Northern Canada winters, um, how well equipped are they? Yeah, the winters um, is definitely another main source of mortality for kangaroo rats. So it's important that they gather enough food during the summer and fill their, their food stores um, because they don't hibernate over winter. They do need to rely on their overwinter food storage. Um, and so definitely if they are not able to um, store enough food for the winter, they may die of starvation or um um, and then they need to keep up their energy reserves so they don't die of hypothermia. But yeah, winter is also really tough on kangaroo rats. In terms of uh, your optimism, um, are you are you are you hopeful that we can see a turnaround of of these uh, these mammals and and whether or not they ever get off the endangered list is another question. But are you at least optimistic that perhaps the tide can be turned? Right now, I'm definitely feeling optimistic. So I started the first translocation last year and released 23 individuals at an extirpated site. And the majority, I feel that there's um, about 70% survival. So yeah, they're persisting on the sites, even though they were translocated. And uh, this year, I translocated another 43 individuals um, that so far in my post-release monitoring um, the majority are still there on the site and using the burrows that I created for them. So I am feeling optimistic that um, that these sites can be repopulated with the with the methods that I'm using. And we just need to ensure and do whatever it takes to maintain these habitats over the coming years. So, for example, if they need to be burned again in five, ten years, I'm hoping that I can work with these partners again. Uh, to make sure that we maintain the habitat. Now, these these guys are are nocturnal. So, how do you go about um, tracking them down uh, in the middle of the night in the in the deep dark desert? That's right. Yeah, we have to go out at night to capture them. Um, so, yeah, I, I switch to a nocturnal schedule, um, just like the kangaroo rats, and start my work after sunset. And and how do you? How do you literally try and find them? What 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 what's the what's the magic there? Well, yeah, we walk around with um, flashlights and headlamps, and just try to spot the animals. And we do all the captures by hand. Kangaroos are pretty trap shy, um, but we can successfully um, capture them by hand, which surprises most people, but um, it does work. That's outstanding. Well, listen, we wish you nothing but continued success with your research and look forward to having another conversation with you uh, soon down the road and, and hopefully get a, a positive report from you. Sandy, thanks so much. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you. And thank you for your interest. Mm -hmm.